Well, today we're going for a flight on a B-17. That would be the Memphis Belle from the movie of the same name. I don't know what more can be said about that. We are going for a flight in a B-17. This particular B-17 Flying Fortress was one of the five airplanes used in making the Warner Brothers movie, The Memphis Belle. It's one of the few B-17s that have been preserved. It's become something of a hobby for people to rebuild and restore World War II vintage aircraft. You see them popping up here and there at various private airports and so on. Kind of an expensive hobby, but hey, this is the toy man after all. Certainly owning your own World War II aircraft would have to be considered the high art of screwing around. The real Memphis Bell had the distinction of being one of the very first B-17s to finish its 25 missions intact with its crew intact, and so it was brought back to the United States to sell war bonds. The crew had a lot of fun flying it around the United States for a few years, but then it just wasn't needed anymore. It got stuck at Aldis Air Base on display, where it just sort of sat, and then later on it was sold to the city of Memphis for 300 and 50 bucks and it was put on display there in Memphis where it just sort of fell apart. It was vandalized and left out in the weather and one thing and another and pretty soon the Memphis Bell was just not looking good at all. Stayed there until the 1980s when the Air Force decided that it just wasn't right to see the thing falling apart that way. And they moved it to the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio, and started rebuilding it. It's back to looking 100% these days. If you find yourself in Dayton, Ohio, go check it out. That would be the real Memphis Bell. This movie version is now in the hands of the Liberty Foundation, and they're taking care of it. This is a blast. We love doing this. I uh, was When they found me, I was working at San Diego Air and Space Museum's restoration facility and uh, got the offer to come and work on the B-17. I said, work on the B-17, I'll be there in five minutes. So, <laughs> you know, and I've had a blast ever since. This airplane is 69 years old, uh, was built in Long Beach, California at the Douglas plant. And uh, it's a wonderful airplane. My house is paid for, so I can be out here and uh, don't need to make a lot of money, don't want to make a lot of money. I enjoy myself working on the airplanes. So clearly these guys have also perfected the high art of screwing around. They have their own B-17 to screw around with. Now how did they end up with this particular B-17? Well, this B-17 was finished near the end of the war, never went into war service because the war was done as it was rolling off the assembly line, and so they just weren't really quite sure what in the world to do with it. So it went to work with the Forest Service putting out forest fires. They converted it into a fire retardant bomber, and it did that until the 1970s, when it was sort of up for being scrapped out again or gotten rid of in some way or another. But a guy who had flown these things in the war, a fan of them by the name of David Talishit, bought it as a hobby for his personal toy, his own B-17. And so he painted the thing up and fixed it up and it became his personal airplane. Yet another example of the high art of screwing around having your own personal B-17 for your personal toy. A 
Unfortunately, David passed away in 2007, and his airplane was up for sale or redistribution or something, but the family just didn't really want to get rid of it, so they leased it to the Liberty Foundation. Now, the Liberty Foundation already had a B-17, the Liberty Bell. How nice is it to also have the Memphis Bell? Uh, uh, except the... Uh, uh, the Liberty Bell, uh, well, it had a small fire and uh, they had to land it in a cornfield and it, uh, it uh, sort of burned up there in the cornfield. So the, uh, the Liberty Foundation is now flying the Memphis Bell. They are also, by the way, rebuilding the Liberty Bell. Now, you might not think that would even be possible when the whole thing sort of burned up and melted, but the engines came through, the landing gear came through. A lot of the very difficult parts to get survived, and they're rounding up all new aluminum parts, new wings, new fuselage, all of that sort of thing. And here in a few years, the Liberty Bell should be back with us. And then those guys will probably have two B-17 flying fortresses. Now they finance their screwing around by selling rides on the Memphis Bell here. It's a little, it's a little pricey, but uh, hey, it's, uh, it's actually quite worth it. Now you can see that there's a lot of openings in the side of the airplane. The waste gunner position is wide open, always was, so that the waste gunners could fire their 50 caliber machine guns out through those ports. They've also taken the roof off here in the radio room. Originally it had a plexiglass roof up there so the radio operator could see if someone was shooting at him, but they've taken that out. So you can just kind of go up in there and stick your head out through the top of the airplane. You can stick the whole top half of your body out through the top of the airplane. Which is a little intense at 150 miles an hour. This thing typically cruises at around 170 miles an hour. They keep it ever so, ever so slightly slower than that for these rides. It does have a top speed of 300 miles an hour, but they don't try to take it that fast. It would just eat up all the fuel. Moreover, if somebody had their head sticking out at 300 miles an hour, well, they might not have a head left to pull back in. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to be on the outside of the airplane as you're flying along, well, buy a ride on the Memphis Bell and you can find out. The view from outside of the airplane is also quite spectacular, and in this case, seeing the Wasatch Mountains as the plane flies past them is really quite impressive when your head is sticking out through the top of the airplane. It's also terribly impressive on the ground as it comes by, although it's kind of hard to imagine what the Germans must have thought when they looked up and saw hundreds of these things dropping explosives on top of them. They probably didn't appreciate the sheer beauty of the thing, but these days it's quite easy to appreciate the sheer beauty of an airplane like this. I've always been fascinated with the way trains and airplanes and a lot of just completely functional things end up being beautiful almost by accident. They also end up being really fun to mess around with. There is a wonderful side effect from all of this messing around, and that's that these great historical artifacts, be they locomotives or 
airplanes or ships or whatever end up being preserved for future generations, preserving some lovely little slice of our history or at least the artifact of that piece of history. Some might say that that's actually the point, but come on, the point is screwing around and having a good time. So if, as a side effect, you end up preserving history, well, that's just gravy. It's just wonderful. And uh, it also makes a really great excuse when you're trying to explain to people, especially somebody like your wife, why you do this. You could say, well, I'm preserving history, but come on. We're having a good time here, aren't we? So whether it's planes, trains, or automobiles, and hey, let's throw ships into the mix, because I, I met these guys and they have tall ships for a hobby. That, that'll be an upcoming episode. That's pretty cool. But these things are just an enormous amount of fun. And if you can turn a few bucks to help pay for the thing, that's good, because these things do have a way of getting a little, you know, expensive. This airplane is financed by people coming out and visiting with us, uh, making donations and all that, as well as flying. We tell people that the aircraft has to work for a living. That's, she's, that's what, the reason she survived. She always had a job to go and do. Well, there it is, uh, flying around uh, the Salt Lake Valley in a B-17. On the list of things that really and truly don't suck, that really and truly doesn't suck. And who knew that you could also climb out through the top of the airplane and ride on top of the fuselage. If you ever have a chance to do that, and if it comes through your town, you will, one thing I can suggest before climbing out onto the top of the airplane, SPF 30. Well, I don't know how you found this particular movie on the internet. I'm hoping you didn't find it boring. Do come over to the channel and subscribe. You'll notice that a button is appearing just now, a blue button that says subscribe, and that will subscribe you. Or you can go to the Guy's Hobby Shop link, which is on the channel page, and that'll take you over to the brilliant toyman.com and you can just go there directly if you want to toymantelevision.com and you can look at all of the movies there you can link back to YouTube you can go to the Facebook page you can like me you can follow me you can do all those wonderful things that people do well we have something fun lined up for next Sunday too so I will see you here again in one week bye